So MSNBC analyst Joy Reid came out after the election, well, actually while the election was wrapping up, and said that it was white women's fault in North Carolina is the reason why it's their fault. Is the reason why Donald Trump carried that state that they sure thought that the Democrats had a stronghold on, as in like Georgia too. But Donald Trump got this two them two states also. But let's listen to Joy Reid, and then I got a take on it that a lot of you may not want to hear, but it's the truth. North Carolina uh, called for Donald Trump. Yep, yeah, and uh, so it was, uh, you know. It's a state that I think Democrats definitely were reaching for. There was a lot of work to try to turn out the college campuses, which were really thick and really packed, and try to turn out the suburbs. Um, and I think there was a lot of hope because of just the insanity, can we say fairly, of the person who's running for governor in that state and a thought that, you know, defeating him would also carry Harris in. Uh, but in the end, you know, if they didn't make their numbers and es essentially exceed the numbers that Joe Biden had in the suburbs, and I think we have to be blunt about why. Um, black voters came through for Kamala Harris. White women voters did not. Hmm. Um, that is what it appears happened in that state, um, is that if you can't flip enough white women, and we've talked about this on this set m numerous times, is that you have a state where you've got a six-week abortion or a 12-week abortion. I think theirs might be 12 weeks. Yep. But it's a state where women lost their reproductive rights, where there was a very heavy push to get women to focus on not putting in place, uh, you know, re-electing, putting back into the White House the person who was responsible for taking those rights away and restoring them. Um, but that message obviously was not enough to get enough white women to vote um, for Vice President Harris, a fellow woman. This would be the second opportunity that white women in this country have to change the way that they interact with the patriarchy. And, you know, God bless Shannon Watts, who has tried to have that conversation. But if people aren't receptive to it, and if people vote more, um, you know, party line or more on race than on gender and on protecting their gender, there's really not much more that you can do but tell people what the risks are and leave it to them to do the right thing. So, Joy Reid, like I said, came out and said that it was white women's fault that Donald Trump pretty much won his state because he couldn't flip him. Joy Reid, and I'm going to say a lot of sisters in this country, have to understand white women know where their bread is buttered, for the most part. <clears throat> Now, when you see these news stories and these protests, when they talk about abortion rights, I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, it's most of the women that you see out there hollering about this abortion rights don't even look like a dude would touch them. Let me just be honest with, them, with you. Like I say, look like linebackers that play for the Cowboys or the Green Bay Packers. What else? You know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just going by what they put out, what they put out front. So it makes no sense. But the women who ain't saying nothing, who ain't finna go out there and go against their men are married white women. Because they understand, the majority of them do, they understand who makes the money, they understand who runs the country, they understand who runs the world. No matter what you like or don't like, they know how to stay on code and go with the flow. Yeah, they'll come out there with you and and talk about women's lib, like back in the sixties or seventies. They'll be they'll be the front runners on that. Talk about women's rights and women should do this and women should be able to vote and women should be able to work. Women should be able to do the same thing men do. They will go out there and stomp for those issues, but behind closed doors. Behind closed doors, they, they will stomp, but they will be away from their husband. When they get close to their husband, when they get near their men, oh, they love it, dovey. They are, you know, they're being submissive. They're being feminine. They're doing everything their husband wants them to do, whether they like it or not, because in the end, they do not want to go back to living in in the trailer parks, they do not want to go back living on a farm where they have to sit there and, you know, 
milk cows and and, and you know what I'm saying and, and and ring chicken necks stuff like that. They got them a man working in the city, working in the big city. Got a good job, paying all the bills on the majority of the bills. You know, making decisions in corporate America and at, at home in the church. You know, front row in the church singing. They're not leaving that. They will not leave. They will put up with a whole lot of stuff and they will not, they are not leaving that. And you might think, well, you know, a lot of them get divorced or why won't they get a divorce? Because it's even hard out there when you get a divorce. Because the thing about that money that women kind of realize too, when that money's gone, after that divorce, depending on what state you're living in, now you got to go back out there and do it again. And they don't want to do that. For whatever reason, white women are not going to go against their man when it comes that they're not going to do anything that's going to hurt their man when it comes down to it. They'll sit there and say, man, I'd rather risk a terminal pregnancy than go out here and go against this man and lose everything that I got right now. Just not going to do it. But the problem is, too many times I see our women talking about how they don't need no man. And, and this and this is just beating the dead horse because y'all have heard this 50, 11 times from everybody. And you just won't listen. How destructive and how detrimental it is to our, to our communities, to our families. But you don't need no man. Uh you know, go out there and get that degree first and then go find you a man. Ain't nothing wrong with getting that degree, but you should try to probably get that degree and find a man who's trying to get his degree at the same time. That makes more sense than you trying to do it all alone. And then once you done did all this on your own and ain't need nobody help, did it by yourself, why the heck would you want to go look for a dude? You know what I'm saying? And then why would a dude want somebody who's that headstrong? I mean, just, you know, legitimate, legitimate questions. But like I say, you don't need no man, men or dogs, you know what I'm saying? Your baby daddy ain't this, ain't baby daddy ain't that. Well, you got to go out there and get your own. Girl, you better go out there and date, you know what I'm saying? Get, date as many men as you can, you know, don't settle down until you and your third is woman. That's too late. But you hear that too many times in neighborhoods, on these YouTube streets, on these X and TikTok streaks, while how these women just talk, our sisters talk bad on brothers to where brothers be wanting to go to another country to find a woman. But on that real quick, and then I'm gonna hit this other little topic. Really, on that little on that little note, brothers, if you are actually looking for, let's say a woman who has, you know, good wholesome wifely values, the kind that you really respect in the door. And you're not out there really just trying to, you know, to control a woman and be a whoremonger yourself. You don't have to leave the country. You may just have to leave your religion or your neighborhood. You may have to leave a traditional church. And you may have to go to Hebrew Israelite or the nation of Islam, where they hold their women to a certain standard. And they teach and train their women to be certain ways compared to this liberal way to, of living that a lot of these churches have adopted, which is terrible. I, mean, I saw a video yesterday where this lady, she was singing in the choir and she had this skin tight to like a, you know, almost like a silk dress, like a kimono that uh, the Asian women were wearing. And she would stand in front of the preachers and the preachers all looking up to the right while she's standing over to the left singing and gyrating and stuff. And they trying, one old man had his hand, head like this, but they trying not to look at the woman. Because they know doggone well need to bring choir, choir world grows back. But anyway, real quick, I want to look at exit polls. The NBCnews.com brought out exit polls. It was updated eh, a few minutes ago. <clears throat> and here's what it says about who voted for who. Because, oh, because Joy Reid, like I say, she want to blame white women, but know who you blame? You got to blame the Democratic Party. Period. You got you 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 can try to put blame. You can't put blame on voters. 
because voters are going to vote for what they want. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to vote for what you want, which means if everyone is saying that the majority of people are saying that the economy and immigration are the two of the biggest issues that they are worried about or concerned about, you don't spend 75 to 80% of your time bashing Donald Trump. And then 15% of your time talking about uh, reproductive rights. And then 5% of your time talking about the elemental P community. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Cause people are like, but what are you going to do? You keep talking about this guy, but what are you going to do about my money? And what are you going to do about all these immigrants who's these coming over here illegally that's also hurting the, that's hurting the economy? If you don't make those the top two issues on your ticket, like Donald Trump did, you have no chance of beating Donald Trump. You have no chance of beating any Republican that would have ran against you. Just it just wouldn't it just wouldn't happen. So the Democrat Party has to blame themselves as a whole. Those who pull the purse strings in uh, with the, with the super PACs and, and and the donations or what have you. <clears throat> And those who forced Joe Biden out, told Kamala to come in. The same people who thought a year ago when Joe Biden got ready to run for president that he should get rid of Kamala as his vice president and bring somebody else in. The same Nancy Pelosi endorsed Kamala Harris to become, you know, to run for president. That part, it was just, they just were not, you know, just running smoothly. But real quick, some of these exit polls, see, it says in the gender, say 47% of the voters were men, 53% of the voters were women. So it's more women than men voting. But 55% of the men voted Republican and 45% of the women voted Republican. Again, not too many women are going to go against white women. So they say, well, what are you? You said whites, 71% of the people polled were white. Well, 71% of the voters were white. And 57% of them voted Republican. Black people is 11% voted. And out of them, 13% of them voted for Republican. And don't say Donald Trump or Kamala Harris. It said Republican and Democrat. So who knows? It could have, like, you know, been kind of, because I know some people like myself, you know, I voted some Republican, some Democrat, this and the third. So when you vote on policy, that's really how your ballot should look when you get done with, not just straight down the line. Say 12% of the voters were uh, Hispanic, 3% were Asian, and 3% were other. Now, think about black voters, because a lot of women going to say, a lot of black women say that, they try to blame black men for not voting for Kamala Harris. Tyler Collins, misogynist, sexist, all this kind of stuff, boo boo Let me hit you with a real quick stat, and hopefully it'll, shut everybody up <clears throat> at least if you, if you live in the state of texas now the majority of the sentence of freedmen live in southern states the majority there's quite a few that live like 20 some percent of the population in texas <clears throat> i think is uh, uh, uh the sentence of freedmen i think my about that much you know 20 some percent of the men in texas voted for trump never mind but this is a red, Texas is a red state. Florida is a red state. Alabama, Louisiana, you just name it. And because of the electoral college and the way elections are ran, it don't matter if every black man in Texas voted for Kamala Harris. She still would not have won this state. Simple as that, because there's not enough of us here in this state to have voted, to have turned the state blue. Now, you might say, well, hey, well, other white people would have and, you know, other people. I don't care. It wouldn't have happened. This is this is Texas is not going to happen, man. I drive. I, I live in a red county. I drive down a highway in this county and there are signs with, with you know, Trump got shot in the ear, got grazed in the ear, and he had his fist up like he was a Black Panther. They got billboards, said, keep 
you know, say keep this county red and it's like a something, something.org, but you know, keep, yeah, keep this county red and two, three, two billboards huge with Donald Trump on the front. We done had like, I don't say like, I don't say like a parade, but they have like, sound like a parade where like Donald Trump rally. It's not even, he's not even here, but they just, just hosted this big old function where trucks, tractors, horses go down the freaking freeway promoting Donald Trump to be president. So like I said, Texas, you might got cities like Dallas, Austin. Okay. Your big cities, they can be blue, but we're talking about the rural areas. Those rural areas, man, them sun guns ain't Democrat at all. So let's see real quick. Let's see in the poll race, 71% of the people that see 71% of the people that voted were white and 57% of them voted Republican. And non-whites were 29%, but 64% of them voted Democrat. Again, it's like when you look at the Electoral College, it's about how many people are in that state. And like I say, in Texas, Trump would have won this. So you can't blame us in Texas. I don't know about the rest of you state, but you can't blame black folks in Texas. It's a sex by race. The white men, 34% of the voters were white men. 37% were white women. 5%. 5% were black men in this race and again if every last one of us voted democrat it wouldn't have helped not not by as much as she lost there's no way but seven for, but seven percent of voters were black women and 91 percent voted democrat so again you had seriously nearly 100 percent of women voted voted democrat and come out harris and win man look at I mean, you do the math. I mean, seriously, you do the math. You put in and just just pay attention to the statistics, to the statistics, and the facts. But anyway, this uh, exit poll, y'all should check this out. Like, really, it's on NBCNews.com, and it tells you all the stats. Uh, it say you got the age by race, age by gender. You know, you ask you about your education level, education by race, education by gender. You know, what do they say? Uh, tell them, ask about the income. What I want to look at income, religion. It's like this. Like this one said, does anyone in your household belong to a labor union? Nineteen percent of the people said yes. Well, nineteen percent of the people gonna vote for Donald Trump because the labor unions are a big issue and people get going out of work, losing jobs, factories being shut down. That's a big issue. Not reproductive rights. I mean, not abortion. Forget the reproductive rights. That's not a big issue. Not the LMNOP community. That's not a big issue. Let's see, religion. Uh, uh, parents, are you currently married? Let's see. 54% of the voters were married, and 46% of the voters weren't. And out of the ones that were married, 56% of those voted Republican. Now, when you look at the age, most of the older people vote Republican, but again, especially when it comes to men, we think about legacy, think about our money, think about our finances, think about our retirement. And Democrats did not address none of that at all. Uh, let's see, parents. Oh, y'all already looked at that. Gay, who cares? Let's see, military don't care. First, it. Mm. It says, do you think the condition of the nation's economy is excellent? 5% of the people. Good. 27%. Okay, that's fine. Not so good, 35% and poor, 33%. So not so good or poor, 68% of those people said that. And out of those people, 70% of those voted Republican. Again, the Democrats did not address the issues that was important to the majority of the people. I don't care how much you holler about reproductive rights and how people bust in to cheer for you and you yell at little babies in strollers, people don't care. They're like, yeah, hey, okay, that's over. That, okay, that was great, but what about the e economy? But anyway, that's all I'm going to do about that here. Uh, again, Joy Reid, you know, say you blame white women, but again, white women, they're not going to leave their men. They're not going to go against their men, especially when it comes to this, because they look at the bigger picture, like forget the emotion. Yeah, I might hate to do, get on my nerves, but 
doggone it, this man taking care of me. And he's doing everything he can to try to make sure that I'm living good. And I ain't trying to go back, like I say, to I ain't go I ain't trying to go back to the farm and I ain't trying to go live no trailer park or trying to act like a fake black person living in the hood. I'm just not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. Stick it to the man. And I'm just going to say, sisters, you should think real hard about that. Think real hard about that. We're not perfect. You're not perfect. We all got trauma, but good Lord, we got to learn how to work through it. They work through it. The Hispanics do it. Like You don't hear no other group. I don't hear no other group unless they hang around our people too much talking about trying to circumvent the man's authority. Don't see it like 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 this like this is a big thing, man. Come on, you can talk one thing and live another, but y'all talk and live it, and you see what it's gotten us. But anyway, tell me what you think about this story. Leave your comments below. Share it with the world. Let's have an intelligent conversation. You know how we do it around here. Hey, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Those four things cost you nothing, but maybe a couple of minutes out your day, but it means the world to us here. If you want to support us financially, you can always get a super thanks, super chat, or go to the description box below. There are links there you can click on to help support the channel. Also, don't forget to go to MarlonMorale.com. That's MarlonMorale.com, where you get 10% off your first purchase of all our luxury items. Or if you want to go to the shop button here at the, at the bottom of the screen or below this video, click on there right now. We're having a sale on our sandalwood scented mini beer kit you know sandalwood oil clinically proven to help stimulate hair follicle growth so if you're trying to start that beard growth or trying to thicken up the beard you already got you can't do better than sandalwood and our mini kits come with the beard oil beard balm and beard wash all sandalwood so hey continue to get them hair follicles growing but with that being said i leave you in peace and i'll see you on the other side